Hello everyone and welcome to DNALC Live Shorts. My name is Sharon Pepinella and I'm excited to bring to you a quick, fun, and easy shelter-in-place activity that you can do yourself or with your families. So what I'm showing you here is DNA. And DNA is our blueprint for life. It holds the genetic information that codes for our proteins, which are essential parts of all living organisms and play critical roles in our bodies and provide us with our traits. And one of the important components of DNA are the four DNA bases, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And these are often abbreviated as A, T, C, and G. Now the order of A's, T's, C's, and G's in our DNA is known as the DNA sequence. And while all living organisms have DNA, and a lot of that DNA sequence is very similar between organisms, the differences in our DNA sequence can sometimes be used to tell organisms apart from each other, or be used to figure out what an organism is. So our activity today will be to create a paper DNA sequence that we will use to try to identify an organism. And we'll be doing this by making a paper chain, which you may have done before in school, especially around the holidays. So the idea behind this activity is to add a new base to our DNA paper chain each day that you're sheltering in place, or you can go until you're back in school. The end date is totally up to you. And at the end of that time, you'll figure out what the unique DNA sequence that you get from your DNA paper chain, and we'll search a sequence database to figure out what organism is the closest match to your DNA sequence. So what you will need for this activity are strips of paper. So what I have here are just strips of computer paper. Uh, if you want to use construction paper, especially four different colored construction paper that you can use, one for each of the four different DNA bases, that's great. You'll need a marker. So again, I just have a plain black marker here, but if you're using computer paper and you want to use four different colored markers to represent each of the four bases, that's fine too. You'll need tape or a stapler. I'll be using a stapler today. And finally, at the end of your project, you'll need a computer or a phone that has access to the internet so that we can get to that database that will help us to identify the organism from our DNA sequence. So to start, I'm just going to pick one of the four bases to write on one piece of paper. And again, you can do this yourself or every member of your family can do this each day and add to your chain, whatever you like to do. So I think I'm gonna pick today adenine. So I'm gonna write an A in the center of my piece of paper. So this will be the link in my chain. Now, if this is the first link, what you'll do is you're just gonna fold this over, tape this closed or staple at the end here. And then the next day, you're going to add another link onto the end of this here and you'll create that growing chain. But in fact, I already have a chain that started here. As you can see, I've been working on my chain for a few days now. And I'm just going to add this link onto the end of my chain. So I'll snake my paper through, fold the link over here, and I'll use my stapler to secure that in place. So now I have this growing DNA chain. And you can see at the end of my shelter in place, what I'm going to do is write down each of these four bases that I have here on my link. So for this particular sequence, I start with a G, followed by a T, then another T, then I have a C here, a G, an A, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that will be my DNA sequence at the end of my shelter in place. But we've actually done this activity before, so I'm going to show this to you. So we've done this before at a festival, it was a nature festival called Pine Barrens Discovery Day. And what we did is any participant that came to our booth had the opportunity to add a link to our DNA chain. So they chose one of the four bases and added it onto our chain. And this is the chain that we got at the end of that day. And over here on the left-hand side, you can see this is the DNA sequence that we got from this DNA chain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply copy this DNA sequence. And now, I'm going to open a browser and we're going to use that website that I was talking about to search for what organism might come from my DNA sequence. And I found the best way to do this is simply to do an internet search for the term nucleotide, nucleotide blast. 
Okay. And what that's going to do is to bring up this website here that's from NCBI, and that's the National Center for Biotechnology Information. So if we open up this link, okay, we're brought to the BLAST homepage. And what BLAST means, it's a basic local alignment search tool. And what that is, is it's going to take our DNA sequence and it's going to compare it to a database called GenBank. And GenBank has millions of sequences in it, millions of sequences that are going to be compared to our unique DNA sequence that came from our paper chain. And what it will do is it will potentially tell us what organism is the closest match to our DNA sequence from that giant database. So as you can see over here, it says we're enter query sequence. So what we're putting in is the query. We're going to just click in that box and paste that DNA sequence that we got from our chain. There's really nothing else that you need to do except scroll all the way to the bottom and click this button here that says blast. And this usually takes a couple seconds. And while those seconds are going, what it's doing, what these computers are doing, is it's taking that sequence and, like I said, comparing it to millions of DNA sequence to find what the closest match to your sequence is. So we're going to scroll down, okay, and it's telling us that it's found some sequences that were close to our DNA sequence, which are appear here. Okay, so this is the name of the organism that is the closest match to the DNA sequence information that I entered into that text box above. And over here, you can see this says percent identity. That means that the sequence that I entered into that box is 97.9% .9 similar to this organism here. So that's a pretty close match. Now this is an organism from the Thermococcus genus. I can't pronounce the species here, so I won't go ahead and try. But what we've done before is we took that genus and species here, and I'm going to share with you what we learned about that particular species. And you can see that here. So this is a single-celled member of the archaea domain. So it's a very, very small, small unicellular organism, which is known as a type of extremophile. And what that means is it lives in an extreme environment. You can see a picture of it here. And the environment that it's found in is actually a deep sea hydrothermal vent. Okay, so it's, you can see a picture of a deep sea hydrothermal vent here. It almost looks like a little volcano underneath the water. And these hydrothermal vents can get up to a temperature of almost 750 degrees Fahrenheit. So very, very hot. And what's also interesting about this particular organism that matched our DNA sequence from Pine Barrens Discovery Day was that it's also currently being studied for potential production of biohydrogen, which people are trying to use as a source of clean fuel. So I hope you've had fun and I look forward to seeing your paper chains. Of course, if you like our DNALC live events, you can go ahead and visit our DNALC website where you'll find those events plus all of the other DNALC content. And you can also follow us on social media. We would love to see pictures of your paper chains and to learn what species was the closest match to the DNA sequence that came from your paper chains as well. So we'd love for you to share that on our social media, and we'll make sure to post those uh, when they come through. So I hope you had fun. I had a lot of fun, and I hope you have fun making your paper chains, and we'll see you next time on DNALC Live.